everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. This here is the very final harvest of tomatoes for the season. The tomatoes are done. The tomatoes that are left on there are either too small or have too many yucky spots, but I have harvested what I can of both the slicing tomatoes and the paste tomatoes. So this harvest here is the finale of the tomatoes. Now some years the finale is turned into ketchup, other years it's been barbecue sauce. I've already done ketchup and I'm not doing barbecue sauce this year, so this year's finale is gonna be vegetable juice or like V8 that you can buy from the store. I'm super excited to do this. Now, what on earth would you use vegetable juice for? Well, you can just drink it. It's very tasty. You can use it to make cocktails like Bloody Marys. But what we are going to be doing is using it as a chili base. I make chili several times in the winter. It's actually one of my very favorite things to make. And growing up, my family used V8 as a base for the chili. When I started canning, I normally just used tomato juice that I had canned and then added a bunch of vegetables like green peppers and onions and carrots and celery and that kind of thing. And I still do add those, but I think it's also really fun to can my own vegetable juice or my own homemade V8 um, and use it in the chili. But it also makes really great soup base for lots of vegetable soups or a tomato-based soup. We eat lots of soup over the winter. So today we're gonna get started turning these tomatoes and these homegrown peppers along with some other ingredients into homemade vegetable juice homemade V8. Now the recipe that I'll be following is from the Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving. You guys don't see me talk about this book very often, uh, but there are times that I reference it. Uh, my favorite book, which is this one here, the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. This is my favorite, but it doesn't have a vegetable juice recipe in it. So I'm going back to the good old ball blue book for this. Both of these books are in our Amazon shop if you wanna check them out. The way that we're gonna be starting is by, uh, well, I've washed all of these to make sure that there's nothing yucky on them. And I'm gonna be coring all of these tomatoes. And if there are any brown spots or yucky spots, any splits, I'm gonna cut those off. We're going to be weighing out our tomatoes that we're going to be using today and the total amount of tomatoes we need is 22 pounds. So as I get the cores out and the yucky spots off, I'm going to start weighing them out um, and for a total of 22 pounds. We will end up cutting these tomatoes up at least into quarters before we put them in our big soup pot here. Uh, but first we need to do a couple things. Now I found these handy dandy little coring tools. They have little teeth on them, like you can see that there. And it works really well for getting the cores out of tomatoes. It works really well on strawberries. And you can see this tomato has a little split on it. So I'm just gonna get rid of that before we put it on the scale in the bowl. Now the scale that I have isn't anything fancy. I think I got it from Walmart several years ago. It's actually the biggest loser scale from the biggest loser show on TV. I don't even think that's on anymore. I have no idea. I barely watch any TV. Okay, well this is our first five pounds here. So uh, I'm gonna cut these up and put them in my pot here. I actually switched from my soup pot to my cheese pot because after seeing what five pounds look like I was afraid that 22 pounds wouldn't fit in my soup pot so and I I'm just gonna cut these up like in quarters and I probably could have done this before or as I was taking the cores out and stuff but this just seemed like the right process for me to use. Well, all of those tomatoes are done and I'm super glad that I switched to my cheese pot because 
Look at how many tomatoes are in here. There's no way it was, these would have fit in my soup pot. These are filled up to here. So the next step is that we need to chop up and add our extra vegetables, but we're gonna need to heat this entire mixture up to 180 degrees and it's gonna take quite a while. So I'm actually gonna put this on the stove top, get it started, and then in the meantime, I'll be cutting up the vegetables and putting them in and mixing them in. But this is gonna take quite a while to get up to temperature, so I think we just need to get started. Now, I have harvested all of these green peppers, five green peppers, and there are so many more of them out in the garden that I would just love to pack this tomato juice, this vegetable juice with tons of vegetables that I have from the garden. These peppers and more celery, more carrots, more onions than are called for in the recipe, but I am following the recipe because these are approved by, you know, the people who approve canning recipes. I don't want to risk doing anything that's going to compromise the safety of this canning recipe for my family. And I also feel uh, partially responsible for your safe canning. So I try really hard to make recipes and show recipes on our YouTube channel just as they are described in these recipe books from the ball canning company. So with that said, I'm gonna put four of these green peppers away. We're gonna chop up green peppers, celery, carrots, and onions. We're going to add three quarters of a cup of celery, three quarters of a cup of peppers, three quarters of a cup of carrots, and then half a cup of onion. We're gonna add that in there, uh, mix it all up and get it cooking down. And the last thing that we're gonna add is a quarter cup of chopped parsley. Well, you can see that our vegetable juice has already, it's cooked down quite a bit, and that's awesome. We need to keep this heating up until it gets to 180 degrees, and then we're gonna hold it there for 20 minutes. Um, I just um, measured the temperature just a second ago, and it was like 172 degrees, so it's not too far away. I'm really glad that we got that heating up while we were cutting up the rest, rest of the vegetables. So not too long and then we'll just simmer it for 20 minutes. That is going to soften all of those vegetables that 20 minutes. Then we'll grind it up and move on to the next step. Okay, this has cooked for 20 minutes. I wanna show you guys what it looks like Definitely soupy, but we're not making sauce. We're not making ketchup. We're making vegetable juice. So it's supposed to be kind of soupy. Okay, so this juice mixture, remember, it has all of the tomato skins, all of tomato seeds, um, you know, the, the fibrous parts of the celery, the skin of the peppers. And so there are lots of different ways that you can do to like get all those things out of there. You can use a food mill that you put and turn and turn and all the juice comes out and all the pulp stays inside. You can use a regular blender to blend it down. Uh, there are KitchenAid attachments that will separate the skins and everything from the pulp. 
but what I'm gonna be using is a Vitamix blender because it is powerful enough to break down all the skins, all the seeds and everything into a very smooth liquid juice. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Now I'm gonna be transferring a lot of this hot liquid into the Vitamix blender. I'm gonna blend it up, but then I can't pour it back in here. So I do need to get out my big soup pot that I had before and I'll be able to transfer most of it, hopefully to that without it overflowing. So let's get started. It's gonna take me several different batches to get everything processed through the blender. Well, this was the very last batch. Let's see if it fits in our soup pot. Just barely, just barely. Awesome. Well, the vegetable juice looks wonderful. I've taken a couple minutes to get ready for the canning process. So I have my canner filled with water, uh, heating it up and I got all my jars ready and everything ready to start canning. Before we heat this back up, I am gonna add some salt. You don't normally see me adding salt to things, but when I tasted it, I realized it needs some salt and salt really brings out flavor um, in a lot of the things that you make and cook. So I am going to add one tablespoon of salt. That is what is suggested in the recipe in the book. So we're just gonna add that. If it ends up needing any more salt, I'll just add it when we use um, the vegetable juice. When I tried it, oh, you guys, it's so good. I can't really tell you whether or not it tastes like V8 because it's been a really long time since I've had V8, uh, but it is very, very tasty. Even though I wish it had a lot more vegetables in it, mainly because I have a lot of vegetables. Just the small amount that we did add just makes such a difference. It's so good. I can see myself just warming this up kind of like um, tomato soup in a mug to drink over the winter. I'm really excited to have this in our pantry. Now that that's mixed in, we do need to put it back on the heat. We need to warm it up to 190 degrees and keep it there for five minutes. After that, we can get started canning it. All right, the vegetable juice is at 190 degrees. It was thin there for five minutes and now I just have it covered with the heat off. But in my jars here, in my hot jars, I'm gonna be adding lemon juice, two tablespoons of lemon juice per jar. You could also use half of a teaspoon of citric acid if you'd like, but I actually am out and I'm waiting for more from my Azure order. Now I'm using bottled lemon juice uh, versus fresh because bottled lemon juice, the acidity level is constant, whereas fresh lemons, they're not always constant. And it's important to have the acidity level be accurate when you're uh, canning things like tomato juice and stuff. Now 
Okay, we're all set here and ready to get started canning. I'm using quart jars today. And I'm actually using a two cup measuring cup instead of a ladle. Just makes things go a little bit faster. We're gonna be filling this up to a quarter inch from the top of the jar per the instructions. Could use a little bit more. We're gonna wipe off that rim. Put a new lid on there, it's clean. A rim, finger tight, and then we're gonna put it right in our water bath canner. Do that again. Well, my canner is filled. There is at least one inch of water above all of these jars. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and let these process for 40 minutes. Actually though, because of our altitude, I need to add five minutes. So I'll be processing these for 45 minutes. Well, the first round of jars have come out of the canner. I have eight quarts of the vegetable juice. I do have some left in the soup pot that I need to can up, but it's gonna have to wait until tomorrow because I'm tired and I need to move on to other things. You guys, I hope you enjoyed spending time with me today in the kitchen while I did the finale tomato canning recipe of the year. I'll just have to pick up again next year. If you're enjoying videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. And if you know somebody who would enjoy making their homemade vegetable juice or V8, make sure you share this with them on all your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.